This King of the Mountain was a big ticket attraction at medieval menageries while it still roamed free on the hills of North Africa and stalked along Mediterranean coastlines. This lion subspecies was so revered by humans that we showed our admiration the only way we knew how to back then, by hunting them to extinction. This was the Barbary lion. Hi, I'm Talia Loewy Mary, and you're watching Paleologic. Today, we're talking about the not so long gone and certainly not forgotten Barbary lion. Sometimes called North African lions or Atlas lions, the Barbary lion is one of two extinct subgroups of extant African lions. This subspecies lived in Northwest Africa from the Atlas Mountains to the Mediterranean. The Barbary lion made itself at home in a wide variety of habitats, from mountain forests and lowland coastal plains to semi-arid regions on the edge of the Sahara Desert. The name Barbary comes from the historical name of the Maghreb region, which itself was named after the Berbers, the oldest known inhabitants of the area. Despite its similarities to living African lions, the Barbary lion is considered its own subspecies due to its unique morphology and behavior. According to 19th century hunters, the Barbary lion was a giant, larger-than-life beast. Based on the taxidermy we have, however, it was likely pretty close in size to today's lions. The Barbary lion had a thick and luscious mane that covered not just its head and neck, but extended down the shoulders to the elbows and wrapped around the belly. Barbaries lived in much colder climates in the mountains of Maghreb than their sub-Saharan counterparts, and would have needed this additional floof for extra warmth. Once the Barbary lion came into regular contact with people, they quickly altered their behavior so that they could survive in the face of human expansion. In the early 1800s, they were found everywhere in the region, but as more people moved in, the lions literally ran for the hills, retreating up into the mountains. There are reports that they began hunting livestock, became more active at night, and started living in smaller groups or pairs, a stark contrast from the iconic prides of sub-Saharan lions today. By the 1920s, Barbaries were often spotted alone. This could mean that Barbary lions continued becoming less dependent on each other and began to lead a more solitary existence. Or on the flip side, these solo sightings may have been indicative of the already dwindling population of Barbary lions. This change to become more solitary has also been observed in today's sub-Saharan African lions that live in human-dominated areas. People have been fascinated by Barbary lions to an almost mythological level for thousands of years. They famously fought gladiators at the Roman Colosseum and were popular menagerie captives throughout Europe in the Middle Ages. They even inhabited the Tower of London. Carbon dating of two Barbary lion skulls found in the old moat of the Tower of London revealed that the older of these two former royal menagerie captives died between 1280 and 1385. That makes the Barbary lion the oldest known lion from the British Isles since the extinction of the cave lion, which died out about 12,000 years ago. Even though the Barbary lion has been revered throughout history and only went extinct in the last hundred years, we still don't know exactly when they died out. Reports of the last sighting of the Barbary lion in the wild are wildly conflicting. The last visual record we have of a Barbary lion is a photograph taken from a plane on the Casablanca Dakar air route in 1925. Some accounts say the killing of a Barbary lion on the Tizi and Tichka Pass in Morocco's High Atlas Mountains in 1942 was the last known contact. Yet another account claims one was seen in an Algerian forest north of Setif as late as 1956, with a more recent theory suggesting that the last was lost with the destruction of that same forest in 1958 during the French-Algerian War. A recent study used a mathematical approach to estimate when the Barbary lion likely died out, 
using statistical data from their last sightings and their average lifespan. The results suggested that they could have lived until the mid-1960s. Ultimately, without hard evidence, we'll never know for sure. Despite no longer existing in the wild, it's possible that descendants of Barbary lions could still exist today. The menageries of kings and sultans of Morocco included lions that were acquired in the Atlas Mountains from Berber tribes. A few dozen of these so-called Moroccan lions, also known as royal lions, are still held in zoos in Morocco, Israel, and Europe, and cubs are still being born. Conservationists are still working to determine if these captive lions are indeed descended from Barbaries, and if so, if they were interbred with sub-Saharan lions. It's because of these captive lions that the official status of the Barbary lion is considered to be extinct in the wild, rather than just extinct. Even if these captive lions do prove to be genuine Barbaries, reintroduction to the wild would be difficult since much of their native habitat has been destroyed by human expansion. Unfortunately, sub-Saharan lions are seemingly on a similar trajectory as the Barbary was a century ago. Today's lion populations have decreased by 43% in the past 20 years alone due to habitat loss, poaching, and human-wildlife conflict that results from lions being forced into close proximity with humans. Hopefully, we'll take a lesson from the past and turn this extinction around before the African lion goes the way of the Barbary. So what should we talk about next? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for coming along on this journey through time. I'll see you later.